almost 50 years ago, when I was in church, the Holy Spirit come upon me, and I was convicted of my sin. I was in deep conviction, and I went up, and I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I believed with all of my heart that He was God, and there was no other God, that He was God, and to said, just be still and know that I'm God, and that's what I was doing, and I went. Told my wife, I said, well, I, dear, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know I'm going to do something. Because the Holy Ghost, he said in his word, when Peter preached at Pentecost, when they asked Peter, so hey, what do you want us to do? He said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That night I did, I received the gift of the Holy Ghost, and I still got it down. Because he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Behold, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. So don't try to get rid of him if you once accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and he anointed you and filled you with the power of the Holy Ghost. Then don't try to get rid of him, or don't try to bystep him, don't try to do anything that, that, that you think that you'll get by with because he said, I'm with you all the time. I'm always with you. And the 139th Psalm, I know you when you get up. I know you when you lay down. He said, I know everything about you. I even know the intents of your thoughts. Well, glory to God, I'm glad tonight, dearly beloved, as I stand here, I'm glad that I serve a God like that. I'm glad that I serve an almighty God. I'm glad that I serve a God with his, his powers is not limited. That he can do anything. I believe that with God all things is possible. It is nothing impossible with my God. Or your God either one is a sister. We know that it's not. But I was going to preach a little bit on... Uh, that's by one of my problems that I'm getting ready to state. I, I forget what I'm going to say. I can't remember the scriptures like I used to. I've got a lot of excuses. And I'm hoping God will accept them because I don't know how much longer I'm going to be preaching. I have to hold on to something now or I'll fall down. And I'm, I'm not begging for pity. I'm not. God blesses me so much. Oh, he's so good to me. But I, I believe it comes a time I'm going to preach a little bit on time. Because I believe it comes a time when God wants you to maybe step aside and let somebody else stay, come in and take your place and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because, as the brother said here, that is the only thing that means anything. Here in the church tonight, as we came, we came in that door to worship the Lord in the spirit and in the truth. He said, God is a spirit, and they who worship him must worship him in the spirit and in the truth. And I'm glad to know tonight that I've got God on my side. I've already fell down four or five times, but it wasn't because I was drunk, it was because... I don't know what the, what the stitch this is about. I've been to the doctors and everything. But anyway, we we'll preach a little bit on time. If you turn your Bibles over to Ecclesiastes and look in the second and the third chapter of Ecclesiastes, the words of the old preacher, Solomon, we'll, see, we'll look just a little bit on a, it is a time for everything. When you come into the church tonight, it was a time for you to worship the Lord. When you come in, when you left home, you had a time limit on you to get here to this church. We do everything by time, and God is in full control of all time. I'm glad of that. 
started in the first chapter. Solomon, Solomon wrote this here. He said, to everything there is a season. And a time, remember this word time here, time occurs in here 28 times. It's very important. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to reflect. Refrain from embracing. I mean, we had a problem like that in the church one time. This couple here, as soon as they sat down in the pew, and they started embracing one another. And their heads right together, one another. They never heard a word that the preacher was saying. And uh, finally, when we got to the opportunity to bring this portion of Scripture to them, it said that it is a time to refrain from embracing and a time to embrace. I mean, you don't do it in the church house. Time to see if I, I, I'm pretty close. A time to get, time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time of war, and a time of peace. Now we don't really understand all of that. Why well, would be a time for some of that that we had that we? But I've a, a let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna get this here. Uh, get this here right. Yeah. God, you can sit down. I didn't think as many people come out here with me. I don't believe it did. I believe he came here to worship the Lord. And that's what I pray that they did. On this time here, we see many, many things here that we can't figure it out. You can't figure it out. A time to love, a time to hate, a time to, to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. Some of those things, dearly beloved, you and I have a hard time of getting that in our mind and figuring out exactly. But when we, when we look at those that we serve an almighty God, we serve a God that will, tell, will, will reveal to us what he wants to reveal to us. We can't just, anything we can't, I, I know I can't, I can't explain all of this right here. I can't explain all of it, but Solomon, when he wrote that, he wrote that it was a time for everything. Every event, every one of the events, or every one of the time, it a, has a period of time added to it. You notice that. I like you notice that. Every time. You read it. It's time to be born. A time to die. And on and on and on. Every event has a period of time added to it. What is that showing us, dearly beloved? It is showing us, as I get to start here just a little bit, it's showing it, it is controlled by God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give God all honor. All, every, every bit of it. Give God all of the honor that is due Him. So at a time, as we read here, was time occurs 28 times. Dearly beloved, time rules and orders every event in our life. It, it was a time of, of when I gave up the old bottle Amen. and I told the cigarettes down Amen. and I started a walking in newness of life. I accepted Jesus Christ. The time had come. I didn't realize that, but the time had come and it was going to be a great change in my life. It was going to be a great time when I lay aside all of them old sins, when I laid aside all of them many old ways and the things out there in the world there in the love, and when I was walking in newness of life, laid aside all of that stuff, 
started looking for the blessed hope instead of looking for a fifth of whiskey. Started looking for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ coming after me and wanting to and hasted him to say, Come on, Lord, come on, come on and get us. Now, come on. Knowing, dear, knowing that I had a different outlook on life because he had given me the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So yeah, I could tell then that I was a different person. I was a walk in to, in a way to try to please God. I was laying aside all of them old things and the many things that easily beset me. And I was a trying, I made up my mind that day almost 50 years ago. I made up my mind. I'd walk in newness of life. I'd try to serve my God. I had a fear of God in my heart. And I was a looking for the blessed hope. And I knew one of these days that it would be a time period in my life for me to die. And if you die in your sin, and he says you can't come where I am, I, I started reading the Bible. I read, I read the Bible and I've read, I don't know how many years ever I read the Bible. I read five chapters a day, every day, every day. I read five chapters a day. The good Lord took me I didn't figure he'd use somebody like me. Like I told my wife, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. But the good Lord had a little purpose for me. And I thank my God today that he did, and I hope I've done it satisfactory to him. I hope I pleased him, and I hope I've done that and ask forgiveness for anything that I've done that I shouldn't have done. But he took me there immediately. It wasn't too long. He took me and made me a teacher on a men's Sunday school class. And I didn't even hardly know it said Bible on the back. But I knew then it was time for me to work, to go to work for the Lord. And I started studying. I studied that lesson. I studied that lesson hard. When I stood up before them men, I had an answer. Why did I have an answer? Because the time had come in my life and God had given me a little more wisdom and knowledge of His truth and showed me how I should walk, how I should talk, and the things that I should do. I know that God did that for me. Stayed there just a little while. And I was driving. God knows I'm not going to get to this pulpit until lies. I heard an old preacher say that more lies on the pulpit than any place else. But I don't know, I don't believe that. I, I don't really believe that. But anyway, God took me. I was driving down the road. I was I, I, driving an old white van. I, back at that time, I worked two jobs. I worked over gas electric 36 years. Hard, didn't hardly ever miss a day. And I worked on, I run a TV shop for 22 years on the side. And so I had plenty to do. I was a making a TV run, and I turned and just seemed like the Lord just turned that van around and sent me to a preacher. Sent me to a preacher. That's what God will do. He'll send you somebody that knows what he's doing. You know that? He didn't. He didn't send me to. I thank you, but he didn't send me over to the beer joint. Did he? He didn't do that. He sent me to a man of God. I told him. I said, "Will the Lord?" Call me to preach. He said, I. He said, well, what makes you think so? I said, I, I, I just feel like it. I, I said, he turned me around and sent me here to you. He said, well, I tell you, we will find out. He said, I got a basement here. Let's go down to the basement and I'll let you preach. I said, no, it won't work that way. I said, I got to be led by the Holy Ghost. I said, I can't just go down there and just, just preach to you. I said, no, I won't do that. He said, well, I'll tell you what. And he said, well, I'll take you with me a couple Sundays. So I did. I went with him a couple Sundays. God just kept giving me churches to go to. One afternoon. 
And I always believe, and I believe that I can back it up in Scripture. See, the Bible says that God knows all about you. Knows you when you, as already quoted, knows when you get up, you lay down, He knows everything about you. So God would give up churches. I would go, and I believe with all my heart today. I don't want to brag, but I believe that God knew that I would do it or He wouldn't have given me the job. Woo! Glory to God. It tickled me to death every time I said, I'd have to call up here. I said, you got a church for me this Sunday? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got two of them for you this Sunday. I'm going to send you way down to eastern Kentucky. I'm going to send you down, way, way down in there. And I said, Here's a, I'm ready to go. Get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, rent me an automobile, sent me down there, and I went, and I preached about six, seven, eight years. I don't know how it was. But when God, when I guess God got through with me, got tired of me, but anyway, I preached at about 265 churches all added together. And God knows that I have did that. And I glory, I thank God that He took a man like me and it was time to come in my life when He gave me work to do and let me give me the honor and the privilege to do something like that for Him to be able to tell that many people about Jesus Christ. I preached at Dawson Springs Baptist Church and it was a big pews, big, big, all around. I felt like a little mouse standing down there running all them people. All of them looking at me. But I preached the gospel. Woo! I thought I'd tell you a little bit of that because the time had come in my life from the whiskey bottle and the cigarette and the lying and the stealing and the cheating, anything I took a notion to do. The time had come in my life when God was true. In the death, the death was the, as he said, now is the accepted time. Yeah. Today is the day of salvation. Yeah. Woo! To that same thing, dearly beloved, if you sit here and don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Why today? Because you may not have it tomorrow. Ooh, I feel good. I didn't think I felt this good. <laughs> the Holy Ghost will make you feel good. Amen. Time rules and orders every event in our life. I believe that each and every one of us here today has got a time frame. You've got a time on your life. God loved you so much and me so much that he won't let you know when that time is. Because yeah, yeah. right. well, see, he knew you, you couldn't take it. You'd be killing yourself. You'd be doing everything. God, did, God loves you so much. So I won't let them know. I won't let them. But they have got a time frame. It's a time in their life. Some are 10 years, some 50, some 20, some 100. I don't know. Mine is 88 today. I have got no guarantee of tomorrow. But I do know one thing. That God rules every event in our life. He rules every bit of the time that we've got. Time, dearly beloved, is all you have got today. I don't care if you've got a Cadillac up there and five mansions. It makes no difference. Time is all you've got. Where do you get that time? God gives it to you. Only God can give it to you, dearly beloved. You can't buy it. You can't steal it. You can't turn it back. Only God will give you time. And that is all you and I have is time. That's it. That's it. I know you're young or old. That's all you have. Death and time controls man. Death and time. Time comes for you to die, and then you will die. Death and time controls man. When we run into a, somebody and they say, could I just have a little bit of your time here? I'd like to talk to you. You've given him a little bit of your time. As me and the dear sister said, she said she was older tonight, this afternoon than she was this morning. 
I ain't going to tell who it is because she don't want me to tell how old she is. I love her, though. Anyway, that's another thing. I didn't love nobody. I didn't like no one. I didn't like nobody. I don't believe I like nobody. I was, I, I was just that kind of a guy. I wasn't that big guy or nothing like that, but I just didn't, I just didn't care a whole lot about nobody. But you know what? It was in no times. I love all them people over in Murrayville Baptist Church. I had a feel for them. I, I had a deep desire in my heart to see people saved. I wanted, I, I wanted, anytime someone gets saved, it just thrilled me to see them saved. That's what it should be. We should be rejoiced when we see people saved. But like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old, Joe. I'm, I'm, I'm a little older than Joe. Than, than, I'm a little older than yeah. We spend time to speak what we need to do. Really. Because I've experienced it. I've experienced it a lot. We should spend some of the lot of time that God has given us to speak against homosexual, alcohol, nicotine, drugs. God has given you and I, as we are children of God, we've been born again by the Holy Ghost, have the Holy Ghost in us. We should spend some of the allotted time that God has given you and I, where we will go and criticize and take a strong stand against sin. Amen. 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 Right we should do that. God has given time, given us time. He's given you and I time tonight. What are you going to use it for? Go get the fuss with your wife. First, I wanted your children. I ain't know. I know you're not gonna tell a lie or nothing like that. I know that because you did. I need to look at your innocent faces like that. No, you ain't gonna. You ain't gonna do nothing like that. You're not gonna use none of that lot of time that God has given you. You're not gonna do that. You're not gonna use none of that time to criticize, condemn. Fuss at people, lie to people, try to beat them out of money. You're not going to do that if you're a child of God, see. We use that time because we are interested in their souls. We use the time that God has given us. And then it comes to time, I don't know. I believe that some people know when their time is up. I really believe that. I really believe that. I, I, I know God said, that, you know, that he wouldn't, uh, didn't want you to know when your time was up. But I believe it comes a time when you finally know that your time was up. I believe it did. Because it says over in the book of Timothy, Paul knew his time had run out. Paul knew it. Paul knew it. Paul was old man, old age, he Jewish man. Tired, worn out probably. All knew his time was worn out. But I am so glad that I want to be able, I, I, I am able to say it. Old Paul said, I'm now ready to be offered. My departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. For by his later for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me at that day, and not to me only. Let us be looking for the blessings that God has promised us through Peter. Exceedingly great and precious promises that God has promised us to ones that love him. I believe we saw the scripture. The Bible says, For I shall behold the King in all his glory, the distant land is far off. So that's a promise to you. You're going to hope. 
Well, I believe that Job realizes that. He wrote that when he said, when old Job realized that he would see Jesus after a time. After a time to come up, Job knew he would see Jesus. Paul knew he would see Jesus. I know that when my time is up, I believe I'll see Jesus in a distant land that is far off. I believe we will. We've got things in our life, dearly beloved, that once it's gone, we can never bring it back. Time is the number one. You can't bring back the time when you sit down there, Josh. That time's gone. It goes so swiftly. The Bible tells us how swiftly that it goes. Words that we speak and hurt someone's feelings on. We can't, we can't, like, you, you can't take it back. You can't take them back. Great opportunities that you and I have had in our lifetime, we, could go, we can't go back and get them. We can't go back and get them. Maybe I should have. Maybe I'm better off than I didn't. But you can't, I couldn't go back and get them. I was offered some fantastic job, promotions at Lowell Gas and Electric. And I turned them down every time. So maybe I, I couldn't bring back them opportunities. After I, after I turned them down, they didn't come back no more. They didn't, they didn't come back anymore. Now they come back and say, Sam, you want that job? You want that? No, it was over. I couldn't bring back that opportunity like I couldn't bring back the time that it was given to me. And it's... Many things in our life that can destroy us as a person to the other person. Anger is the name one. Pride and unforgiveness. I'll be willing to forgive. We should forgive. We yeah. should forgive. We need to do that. And it, the things that are truly in a Christian's life Truly constant there always when you go to bed or when you get up is the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. He's going to stay right there with you. He's going to stay with you. Thank God for that. I do thank God for that. Another thing, time is, in other words, and time is our most precious treasure. It's a limit. It's because it's limited. Now you and I, we can go out here. We can produce more wealth. You can make more. You may get you get a raise if you pay something, and you get a little more wealth. You get a one or one or two percent increase in social security, and then in other words, your wealth has increased. You can produce more wealth, but we cannot produce more time. You can't do it. You can't do it. You just can't do it. I wish. I'd, maybe I'd like for them to do it. I love Brother Sonny. And, uh, I love Fantastic preacher. Maybe if it was left up to me, I'd make him back a teenager. I'd make him back 21 years old where he'd just jump his peaks. He still could jump pretty good. But we give someone our time, we really and truly giving them a portion of our life. That's what you're doing when you're that. Meditate on it. Think about it. When you give them on your time, you give them a portion of your life because time is all that you and I have. So the, I guess really and truly, the best present that you and I can give our friends or our neighbors is to give them our time. That's probably one of the best things. I wasn't even preaching as long. But all we preached tonight, all this was preached here tonight, what was said, only way that you and I or anyone is going to believe that is have faith. Yes, Say that in Sam Jackson, tell the truth, or did he lie? Did God really do that? Is God, did God do all of that? Is it? 
or what is the, what, what was preached there. You've got to have faith in your fellow man, and you've got to have faith in God, because it said without faith it is impossible to please God. We must believe He is rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. We can't see, please God if we don't have faith. Faith will lead and guide us down the right path. Faith will lead our footsteps. Faith in God will make us better Christians. The more the disciples prayed that God would increase their faith. Tonight, I am praying that God will increase my faith, that God will increase your faith, and if God wants to use me, I will. But like I say, a lot of young, all these young preachers down there do so much better job than me. I feel like maybe it's a time for me to listen more than speak. Oh, he said that. A time to speak, a time to listen. It's in there. It's in there. It's in there. It's in there. That's all. Does that mean you, Sam? Let the good Lord decide. I love you. God bless you. Come up here and take over. Count it an honor and a privilege to get to break the bread of life to you a little bit. I know I done it. I didn't do very good, but I tell you what, I did. I did. I did try. I love you, brother. I love you, brother.